Oscar and Felix are an odd couple. Meet Otter and Ape. The otters were being introduced to their new habitat at the Brookfield Zoo in Chicago, a habitat that's home to small apes called gibbons. The gibbons live above in the treetops. The otters live below in the water. How does an otter break the ice with its neighbors? This 10-month-old pup went right up to Nubo, an eight-year-old male gibbon, began sniffing his underarm area, seemed especially intrigued by Nubo's feet. The curator of primates says this intermingling of species probably wouldn't happen in the wild where other species represent a threat. Otters are known as curious, intelligent, and gregarious animals. The gibbons seemed to me to look like embarrassed. Okay, you know, whatever, but he looked a little embarrassed to me. He was just kind of watching cautiously, but was very comfortable with the otter kind of investigating his feet and smelling the hair on his chest. Otters are tactile creatures. Video of them holding hands at the Vancouver Aquarium became a hit on the internet. A couple of aquariums even put holes in their plexiglass so that otters and humans can do some interspecies hand-holding of their own. As for the otter and the ape, was that a smooch? Is there any chance of romance between gibbon and otter? Uh, I would think not. Actually, it was a series of pecks resembling kisses that finally caused the gibbon to swing away. Apparently, he's not that kind of swinger. Genie Mouse, CNN, New York. We call it global climate change, and it is, but it affects each of us, no matter where we live, in your city, your town, or your farm. Climate change is having its effect. The more people we are on the planet, the less resources there are for each of us. In my lifetime, we've eradicated two-thirds of wildlife on planet Earth, almost like a mind-boggling scale of loss of life. The Colorado River is drying up. We use and discard so much plastic into the world that it finds its way into our food chain. Joshua Tree National Park. In the next century, all of this could disappear. Sounds grim? Well, it kind of is. I want to build a compost site and help that community stand on their feet. That's what compost power is about. It's about just giving the power to the people. I think, really, we are in the situation that Noah was in. And the question now is, what can we say? How else can I give back? How else can I make my energy matter? We as tribal people, we're very dedicated to our homeland. If we can live in harmony with nature, then we are able to harness nature for these paradigm-shifting solutions. We need to preserve our soil. I mean, the good news is we can build it. Only what you love would you protect, and only what you learn about can you come to love. 